If you're willing and able, if you would stand for the uh, invocation and remain standing for the pledge of the flag. Dear Lord, we gather here this morning to make uh, decisions for our community. May we use our best skills and judgment, keeping ourselves impartial and neutral. As we consider the merits and pitfalls of each matter that is placed before us, and always act in accordance with uh, what is best for our community and our fellow in the county citizens. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God and indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. I'm showing sure 9 o'clock with the regular public meeting, Henry County Board of Commissioners, uh, December 2nd, 2014, come to order. If somebody moves uh, to uh, visit the agenda and understand uh, Commissioner Bowman is going to have an amendment, uh, so if he would yeah, make Mr. a motion. Mr. Chair, I would like to amend the agenda uh, to item 13, add item 13D. And that's to name the park at Kelly Town, Bud Kelly Park. Uh, Mr. Kelly, uh, obviously Kelly Town, Mr. Kelly, the, the family's still there. He was a public servant. He was a, a commissioner. Uh, and I feel like it's very appropriate for that community for it to be Bud Kelly Park. And I'd like to amend the agenda to have that added, please, sir. We have an amendment. Uh, have a second, second district uh, five. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Okay, the agenda has been amended and accepted. Presentation of a lifetime achievement award for two Henry County Master Gardeners, Colleen Curry. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. <coughs> This morning we have uh, a presentation of two lifetime Master Gardeners. Uh, the Henry County Master Gardener Extension Volunteer Program is a volunteer training program designed to help extension agents relate res research-based information about gardening and related subjects to the public by training home gardeners. Master Gardeners currently are active in many Georgia counties. Through this program, volunteer benefits, volunteers benefit from the classes and ongoing training and the opportunity to share knowledge with others in the community. Volunteers are committed to gardening and community improvement, plant clinics, horticultural projects, and the program is sponsored by the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension. Certification as a master gardener involves great effort and dedication and includes 24 classes beginning every year in January. The master gardener program is designed to develop highly skilled volunteers that agree to volunteer a minimum of 50 hours of service in exchange for 40 hours of horticultural training by cooperative extension professionals. And typical volunteer activities include gardening demonstrations, plant clinics, phone and site consultations, newsletters, youth gardening and community gardening, information booths at fairs and festivals, research and writing projects, teaching classes, newspaper and magazine articles, community gardening, and also a scholarship program. And so this morning we have two master gardeners who are receiving lifetime service awards. The first one is Sandy Adams. Sandy Adams has been gardening for years in Pennsylvania and she found Georgia soil and growing conditions to be unlike Pennsylvania. However, not to be discouraged, she met with local master gardeners who encouraged her to become part of their ranks. She was accepted into the program in 2004. Sandy has served as president of the Henry County Master Gardener Extension Volunteers in 2007 and past president in 2009. She is proud of the volunteer work performed by the master gardeners of Henry County, and the master gardeners appreciate her service and dedication to the residents of Henry County. Our second award is going to Carolyn Runyon. Carolyn Runyon, as an avid gardener, wanted to increase her knowledge of plants and found that the Master Gardener Extension Program filled that need. In the last 10 years, she has generously shared what she has learned with countless residents of Henry County. She is a member of the Community Gardens, volunteers in the Arbitrary Giveaway, and she volunteers annually at the Kuba Hasha Program for third graders. She says she has found the last 10 years as a Master Gardener to be enjoyable and is glad to be serving people in her community. And the Master Gardeners appreciates her service and dedication. And we have them here today.
We're also going to have a presentation of certificates of achievement awards, and uh, Melissa will present these as well. Again, good morning. I have Donna Holder, Executive Assistant with Parks and Recreation, here with me. And this year, the Henry County Parks and Recreation Department was the recipient of five awards from the Georgia Recreation and Parks Association, GRPA, during, during its annual conference held on November 5th, 2014 on Jekyll Island for their outstanding contributions to the field of parks and recreation. The GRPA is a nonprofit institution that supports and promotes the recreation and park industries. We have five awards, and I'm gonna name those five right now. This year, Henry pa County Parks and Recreation Director Tim Coley was the recipient of the Mike Daniel Award, which is presented each year in memory of Mike Daniel, a leader in the field who strived during his career for the highest level of achievement. This award is reserved for individuals who have excelled in the area of supervision and implementation of recreation, parks, and or leisure activities. And I'll call out all five names and then we'll get a group picture. The second award went to athletic coordinator Brandi Daly, who was recognized with the Athletics Distinguished Professional Award for her outstanding contributions to the youth sports program in Henry County. Therapeutic Recreation Specialist Harlan Matthews won the Therapeutics Distinguished Professional Award for his outstanding contributions to the wheelchair sports program. Special Olympics volunteer Alan Hudson was awarded the Therapeutics Outstanding Volunteer Award for his leadership in enabling the program to gain more volunteers, sponsorships, and coaches, and for the Henry, for the Henry County Special Olympics program. And Hot Shots Paintball Complex at Windy Hill Park won for outstanding renovated park and recreation facility. Get in for a picture. Next, we'd like to recognize uh, Jennifer Rosenbaum to address the board for 15 minutes. Second announcement, Ms. Rosenbaum. Say again. Okay, I'm gonna take her off of the agenda. We'll move on. Uh, public comment, citizens are allowed to voice county related concerns, opinions, et cetera, that are not listed on the agenda during this portion of the meeting. All persons wishing to speak for public comments must sign in, which they have. You must sign your name, address, and a specified topic you wish to speak about, or you will not be recognized. You will be able to address the board for five minutes. Taking an order, Mr. Bill Tony, uh, state your name and address for the record, and he's going to speak on call meetings and racial slurs in county manager's email. Bill Tony, 1652 Highway 155 North, McDonough, Georgia. Uh, as most everybody knows, I've been going through a lot of emails, and uh, I found some that was kind of disturbing to me between uh, Mr. Walker and Mr. Ash. Uh, Mr. Walker is calling Mr. Ash Willis, and then Mr. Ash is calling him Boss Man. All right, I think that's highly inappropriate. When you're on a honeymoon, everything's fine and rosy and you got smiles. But if you ever go through a divorce, that's when everything gets dirty. These, these uh, with the racial tension that there is today, we don't need these kind of acts. And I'm asking the board to please uh, take a look at it. I've got the email that was on uh, October the 8th, 4.30 p.m., 2014. Uh, also like to talk about uh, 
Uh, well, we need to take some kind of action on that. You can't have this stuff going between, especially management. That's just very, very inappropriate. Um, and about the call meetings, uh, I don't, I don't really think that the public knows what a call meeting is or what can be done with it. You can have two commissioners out of town, four commissioners can, can come in here and make decisions out of the, out of the blue. 24 hour notice, if I'm not mistaken, 24 hour notice and I can have Mr. Holmes, Mr. Preston, Mr. Barham and Mr. Boss, uh, Moss come in here and make decisions. 24 hour notice, I'm sure everybody doesn't read the paper every day, but that's all that's required. I think that needs to be changed. And these, these uh, call meetings, did you come in here for five minutes, discuss something, or you go to executive session, discuss something, you come out, you take a vote before three people is gonna take a vote and it's done, that is wrong. I don't think that the average person, I really never, I never knew it. Um, you know, just being ever, uh, just everyday citizen until I got involved with politics, I didn't, I didn't realize what could be done and how it could be done. But uh, we need to make some changes on that. The executive sessions, you've had eight this year and the, the public needs to know about it. And uh, I encourage all the public, uh, everybody, to kind of keep up with these meetings and see what's going on and how y'all vote. The kind of stuff, we've tried to get away from the backdoor stuff. A lot of you guys got elected for, for wanting to do away with the backdoor stuff and things that happen behind the scenes. I think it's highly inappropriate for y'all to just at a whim that y'all can call a meeting, whoever's in town, whoever's not in town, and uh, you can make something happen, take a vote and it's done. Nobody can stop you. Uh, everybody needs to kind of take a look at these meetings and just what's been going on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we'll have uh, Ms. Joyce Hinton. State your name and address for the record, please. Oh, and by the way, Ms. Rosenbaum just showed up. <laughs> uh, my name is Joyce Hinton, 904 Flat Shows Church Road, Stockbridge, Georgia. Uh, I would like to address a concern that I have over the response a county employee made about a tax-paying citizen at a Board of Commissioners meeting in November. The county employee, who I will henceforth refer to as a public servant, addressed the Board of Commissioners and criticized uh, the citizen for a harmless, simple harmless statement of conjecture that he had made. The public servant went so far as to state that the ci citizen owed an apology to a commissioner Furthermore, the public servant went on to state that this citizen was making too many FOIA requests and tying up his people and his commissioners. Um, it's the right and it's the obligation of citizens to do these FOIA requests, to examine them and make sure that our government is transparent. But first I would like to know at what point did an unelected public servant get to publicly criticize a taxpaying citizen in a public meeting? Secondly, when did the commissioners that were elected by the citizen voters become his people instead of the citizens? Thirdly, when did it get to be the public servant's job to determine how many FOIA requests a citizen could make? Perhaps this public servant would prefer a group of numerous citizens making these requests. It leaves one to wonder if this public servant, <coughs> servant has a problem with governmental transparency. Lastly, the citizen who made the harmless statement does not owe an apology, but this public servant certainly does. My advice to this public servant is to stick to reports that your job duties require and let the citizens converse with the commissioners that they elected to serve them. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That completes the public comment. Let's move down to the consent agenda. The following agenda items shall be considered on the consent agenda. 
Note before voting on the consent agenda items, the chair will provide opportunity to add or delete the item. We only have one item. We have a resolution of the Board of Commissioners to accept $1,312.50 from the United States Secret Service Financial Crime Task Force. Can somebody move to accept that? So, so have a motion, District 4, second for District 3. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so move. That ends the uh, consent agenda. Tax Assessors Department resolution regarding terms of office of members of the Board of Assessors, Mr. J Patrick Jogstetter, and uh, the Chief uh, Appraiser, Mr. Charles Reddick. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, first, I'd like to clarify something. I put uh, Mr. Jogstetter down as uh, one of the presenters only if there was a legal question involved in it. I'm not insinuating that he is for or against anything that I have to say, and I just wanted to make that very clear. The other thing I wanted to do is I am representing the board here today, the Board of Assessors, and we have our chairperson here with us, Ms. Attaway, uh, and uh, the other board members were not able to attend, but she is here representing all of them. <coughs> Under code, Georgia Code 485295A sets that the term of the assessor, board of assessors for each assessor uh, to be from three to six years. For many, many years, the assessor's term was at six years. And back in uh, 2010 or 2011, and I'm not real sure about that, it's one of those years, uh, the Board of Commissioners reset the term limits of the Board of Assessors back to three years. For what reason, I was not here, so I don't really have any idea why that is. Um, we are asking today that you, the Board, change that term limits back to the appointment limits back to six years. Georgia Code 485290 specifies the requirements to be an assessor. In those requirements, there's, uh, they are required to be certified. In order to be certified, they have to have 40 hours of schooling within the first six months of appointment, and then they have to have 20 hours uh, recertification every year in order to remain on the board. The other things that are involved in it uh, the board members have to have a knowledge of Georgia law pertaining to the appraisal process and the assessment administration. Uh, if you look at the code book that controls what we do, it's about that thick and half of it goes to telling the assessors what they have to do. They have to have a knowledge of a, uh, the appraisal procedures manual. That's a publication of the Department of Revenue that specifies how we as appraisers in the department have to react and uh, the way that we have to perform our job. We feel that um, they have to have an understanding of the overall impact of what our department provides to the county and to the taxpaying citizens of the county. Stability and consistency of the procedures and policies involved at the ad valorem taxation level are extremely important. In other words, experience really counts. For those reasons, I'm asking the Board of Commissioners in behalf of the Board of Assessors to change their term limits back to six years from the three years which the resolution is included in your uh, package. Anybody have any questions? If not, we'll have a resolution in the book for the Henry County Board of Commissioners regarding a term of office for the members of the Board of Assessors. Move to approve. Have a motion from District 3 to approve. Second from District 1 to approve. Any further discussions? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, boy. Next, we'll have the Henry County Police Department uh, contract award for the property and evidence room management equipment for the police department. Major Keith Going. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Um, on September the 16th, I brought before you the uh, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Grant, uh, which you accepted. 
and in this grant the we wanted to purchase a property and evidence and quartermaster management software program to hold us more accountable for the items that are coming in and out of both the property and evidence room as well as the quartermaster's office the software request was given to the purchasing department along with a sole source letter for Aaron technology the purchasing department has reviewed the sole source letter and verified the contents the cost of the full site site for Aaron modules for the evidence property and evidence room management software is eleven thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars and an annual service agreement charge of one thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars would also be in addition to that a total amount of twelve thousand nine hundred dollars for the software portion of this the remaining sixteen thousand three dollars from the JAG grant would be used for the peripherals which are currently in the bid process we're coming forward today to request that Aaron Technologies be awarded the contract. Anybody have any questions, comment? We have a resolution. The Board of Commissioners awarding a bid for property and evidence room management software. So moved. Have a motion, District Four. Second. Uh, second from District Five. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank you, sirs. Next, we have the approval of a purchase of a dual-purpose patrol and narcotics. K-9 and handling training, lodging, use, using departmental funds. Major. Yes, sir. Good morning again. Um, the previous meeting, Ms. Angie Sorrow came before you for the purpose of transferring uh, available funds over to be allocated for the use of K-9. Uh, we have recently re retired one of the K-9s, and we're requesting to use K-9 Concept, which is a Louisiana-based K-9 training facility. We've used this facility for 20 years here at the police department. Um, in addition to the canine itself, the training will also be provided for the handler and all of the uh, legal aspects of the canine are handled through their specific uh, litigation team. So uh, we're requesting to use canine concepts for the purchase of this. The total amount will be $15,400. That does include the canine training course. We have a, a resolution in the book, the Board of Commissioners to approve the purchase of a Belgian Malinosis K-9 from K-9 Concept Incorporated. So moved. Have a motion, District 1, second from District 4. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, uh, Stormwater Award of Design Services to Moreland Ottobelli Associate Incorporated for the Clark Drive Covert Replacement. Mr. Wade Stroud. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I'm excited to stand before you this morning to present the first of two projects that we have vetted through our Capital Improvement Program instituted at Stormwater. This program um, is designed to consider projects, uh, major stormwater improvements that impact public safety, as well as the overall water quality of watersheds located within Henry County. Uh, this process takes known flooding, safety, and water quality issues and ranks them based on merit and other environmental factors. Uh, the culvert located under the Clark Drive roadway adjacent to Pools Manor Mobile Home Park was identified as an undersized culvert that contributes to mass flooding during large rain events. Approximately 50 mobile home sites are at risk during these large rain events, as well as Clark Drive itself. The roadway overtopped back in September of 2009 is one of these rain events. The Capital Improvement Program identified this as a project of need and a request was made to the Henry County Purchasing Department to place a sealed bid for engineering services to analyze the flooding issues as well as design the culvert uh, upgrade under Clark Drive to safely pass the water underneath without allowing overtopping. We had 10 responsive bidders uh, to this sealed bid that was done through our purchasing department. Moreland Altabelli was the most qualified and responsive as well as the lowest price vendor. I'm asking that the board authorize the award of design services to Moreland Altabella in the amount of $13,248 to analyze this project. This includes surveying, geotechnical, and design services. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions? If not, we have a resolution of the Board of Commissioners to award a design services to Moreland Altabella Associate Incorporated for the Clark Drive Culvert Replacement. Have a motion, District 5. Second. Second, District 3. Correct. Yes, District 3. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so move. Thank you. Next, we have an award 
of design services to Morton Altabelli Associate for the Laurel Lane Covert Replacement. Mr. Stroud again. Good morning. Good morning, sirs. Laurel Lane Covert Replacement is also known as Lakeshore Drive at Swan Lake Community. Uh, this is another culvert project uh, that was vetted through our capital improvement program. When Laurel Lane or, or Lakeshore Drive, whichever way you want to call it, overtops, it overtops in this location as well as in another location on the west side of Lakeshore Drive. When this occurs at the same time, there's approximately 300 residences that are trapped and landlocked in this event. We identified this project as a project of need because it would alleviate uh, the flooding at one of these roadway locations and no longer keep those citizens landlocked during these events. Again, this bid was administered through our purchasing department for design services. And again, I ask that you, uh, I recommend that you award the uh, design service contract to Mullen Altabelli Associates in the amount of $14,240. Again, this includes surveying, geotechnical, and design services for this project. Anybody have any questions or comments? If not, we have a resolution the Board of Commissioners award a design services to Moreland Off to Belly Associate for the Law Lane Covert Replacement. So moved. Have a motion, District 5. Second. Second, District 4. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank you, sir. Next, under capital projects, got a resolution to approve award. The bid to construct a storage building at Sandy Ridge Park located in District 1 in McDonough using budgeted splash 2 funds. Mr. Burke Halter, good morning. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. The Purchasing Department solicited bids to construct a storage building at Sandy Ridge Park and posted bid number 15-19 on the website of the county, Team Georgia Marketplace, and ACCG. GLGA. Prospective vendors were notified about the posting via the Team Georgia Marketplace and by email. Ten responsive bids were received. The low bid from Paul's Design and Construction of Covington, Georgia was reviewed. Additional information was requested and references were checked. Staff recommends the award of bid number 15-19 to Paul's Design and Construction of Covington, Georgia in the amount of $39,922. Any Comments? Have a question. I yield the floor to District Four. I'm a, I'm a little concerned only from I, I don't know any. Well, I, I know a couple of them, but I don't really uh, know the low bidder. I, I'm a, a little concerned when he's 40 plus or minus percent lower than anybody else. And I, I look at that, and I, you know, we pay the same price for concrete and stone and and wood and bricks and mortar and has he 40 percent lower i mean it did I, and I, I i know you and i know that you you looked at that and verified it but just could you help me with that just a little bit I, it, it's unusual for somebody to be that much lower when you got that many bids commissioner this this building is a 20 by 40 foot uh concrete block building there's no finishes in the building uh, no floor coverings. Um, there's no plumbing in the building. Again, it's a storage building. We asked for additional information or a breakdown from the vendor, okay, by line item, and everything was in line. And the, the bottom line for me was if you look at the total dollars and you look at the, the square footage for a storage bill, it's $50 a square foot, which seemed. I'm good with that. I okay. just, when I look at it and see the. <coughs> Uh, you know, just see the disparity in the bids. I, I, sometimes I wonder, okay, I, I, I see those and I understand that, but was there any site work or anything else that would be, you know, that you know, whatever. But it does, you know, it, you know as well as I do, we're both been in, in that business and it does kind of, you kind of wonder how one's doing it so much cheaper than the other. But that, that's, that's good. And I, I knew you did your homework. I just, in case somebody looked at it, I wanted to make sure that we, uh, at least had an explanation for it. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes. You feel good with that? Sir. You feel good with that? Oh, yes, sir. I, I'm fine with it. I mean, really, the, that size storage building shouldn't be a huge amount of money, but I, you, I, you never know exactly what's involved from the site work standpoint or what else, you know, if there's something else involved in it other than that. And, and uh, I'm good enough with it that I'll make the motion to approve it. I have a motion to approve a resolution 
of the Board of Commissioners to approve and award a bid to construct a storage building at Sandy Ridge Park located in District 1 in McDonough, Georgia using budgeted splash 2 funds. You have a second? Second. Have a second, District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor? Raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Next, we have a resolution to approve and award a contract to design build the Kelly Town Park located in District 4 in McDonald. Uh, Ron Burkhoff, Halter. Thank you, Chairman. Person Department solicited proposals for a design build of the Kelly Town Park and posted RFP number 14-21 on the website of the county, Team Georgia Marketplace, and ACCG GLGA. Prospective vendors were notified about the posting via the Team Georgia Marketplace and by email. One responsive proposal was, was received from Sports Turf of Whitesburg, Georgia. Their proposal was reviewed and scored by uh, an evaluation committee. After negotiating the scope of work, the evaluation committee recommends accepting Sports Turf's best and final offer, which is attached to the uh, executive summary in the amount of $2,169,000. The SPLOS Department is requesting authorization to use SPLOS 4 funds to design build the Kelly Town Park located in District 4 at 1605 Kelly Town Road in McDonough, Georgia. Anybody have any questions or comments? I yield the floor. Uh, one, uh, a, a, a question. Uh, approximately how many acres is this park? 126. 126, and it needs to be uh, clear that this property was purchased, uh, what, six years ago when it was actually District 5? I think that's correct, Commissioner. And when it was purchased, it was purchased for two reasons. There was a, it, and there still is, a, uh, a site location for a fire station, as well as a passive park, in which passive park means no ball fields, it's walking trails and playground area and parking and some other things. Uh, at the time it was purchased, uh, the comment is that you know, there was no money to do those items. You know, they, they purchased it, and Kelly Town area has not had a, a park or any real capital improvement, uh, you know, for as long as I've been in Henry County, and I've been here for quite a while. But uh, this, this was uh, something that was voted on by the citizens when they voted for the SPLOS. It was part of the list. Is that it was at the top of the list for those in, in that area in the district. And uh, I feel very good that we're able now to move forward. I, I know that it looks like, and, and it does take uh, county government, uh, not just county government, that's, that's not true. I mean, it, it takes government, period a long time sometimes to make things happen. One, we don't have the funding sources. Uh, two, you know, we, we do have oversight and we do have to do things, you know, and dot our I's and cross our T's. And um, I just want to thank our staff for doing such a good job and, and Ron is, is staying the drill and making sure that uh, we can get this thing done for those citizens in that area. Um, you know, 120 something acres we are going to have a fire station there it's part of the uh county-wide list and that fire station you know it won't be there for several years i, I and I'm, I'm not going to put anybody on the spot but I'm, I'm saying probably three years or so or more before that one comes online simply because there are other stations that need to be put online on the west side of 75 because 75 doesn't have but one or two stations on that side so by virtue of all of that, I, you know, the, the comment is to let our citizens know, you know, we hadn't forgot it. I've got a number of calls and requests and, and asked, and, you know, when I'm eating dinner one night somewhere at a restaurant, what's happening to our Kelly Town Park? Well, this, that's what's happening. It's going forward, and only one other question on it is approximate time of completion because, you know, we just put it out there for them. We know we're starting it at the worst time of the year because it's winter time, but approximately how long do you anticipate this to take? Commissioner, in talking with the vendor, uh, again, this is a design bill. There's a little bit of design as far as the site work and some adjustments. Uh, in addition to the park itself, I mean, it's going to have over uh, a little bit over two miles of eight foot wide walking trails. Um, we'll be in the process, if, if the board approves this, 
we'll call the vendor in. We have some design that we need to look at as far as some drainage. But to answer your question, we're probably about a year out from completion of the project. And I think, I think that would be a wonderful addition. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, with that being said, if no one else has any questions, I move to approve the award of this project. We have a motion to approve a resolution of the Board of Commissioners to approve and award a contract to design build the Kellytown Park located in District 4 at 1605 Kellytown Road in McDonough, Georgia using budgeted splash four funds. We have a motion. We have a second. second. We have a second. District 5. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Next, uh, we have a resolution approving the quote to furnish and install playground equipment and poured rubber safety surfacing at uh, Kelly Town Park, located in District 4 in McDonald. Yes, sir. The Henry County Splash Department is requesting authorization to use Splash 4 funds to purchase and install playground equipment and poured rubber safety, safety surfacing at the Kelly Town Park and will utilize U.S. Communities Contract Number 110179 to complete this purchase from Game Time Dominica Recreation Products, Inc. The quote from Game Time Recreation Products includes furnishing and installing all the listed playground equipment and 1,750 square feet of poured rubber safety surfaces at the Kelly Town Park in the amount of $267,897.65. Is it yes, sir. Uh, I'm just I'm just trying to clarify just a couple of things. Ron, some of this uh, playground equipment's handicap accessible. We made an effort to try and make it open and to any any child that would be able to come out. I, if you that that's true, Commissioner. Uh, after looking at, at Mosley, the playground that we put in at Mosley, which is uh, ADA accept, uh, accessible. We had took, a, a, in, in this product and what we're buying here, um, the long and short of it, instead of being as tall, we're spreading it out where it's more ADA acceptable. Uh, there's more amenities in the playground that'll be ADA plus the, the uh, 1,700 square feet of the rubberized, where in, in our playgrounds now, where we just ha we have the, the wood chips, okay? This is a rubberized surface, okay, that'll be around, especially around the, the ADA access points and the, and the, uh, the swings. Yes, sir. And in, in this also is included a number of pavilions. Uh, I'm not going to put you on the spot for the sizes and how many, but we will have some, a, a couple of pretty large ones. And then other pavilions, as well as restroom facilities uh, in the park. That, that's correct. There's restroom, there's parking for 150 vehicles. Um, the, there's restroom facilities. There's parking, what we call for the trailhead. If you decide you want to come there and you just want to, you want to walk on the, the two plus miles of walking trails, you can park in a segregated area from the, the playground area or where the pavilions are. There's three pavilions, one, two smaller, one large pavilion. Um, and again, we, we had, in the design process, we, we wanted to segregate some of the walking, okay, from the playground area or the pavilion areas where Park and Rec has been successful in renting those facilities out. Yes, sir. Is there a way that we could post the uh, conceptual pictures online at a later date so the citizens could go online and take a look at what's, what's being put in? I, is, Absolutely. We, Absolutely. If we could do that, I think that would be uh, uh, good for them to be able to see exactly what we're trying to do and what it's going to be like. So with that being said, uh, Mr. Chairman, if there are no other uh, questions, I move to approve the... I have one question. All right, so I'm sorry. In, in the last uh, several weeks on TV, they've had several articles about the, the ground-up rubber from tires that they use on soccer fields and in playgrounds, and it was some significant adverse effect of it and I can't I can't speak intelligently about it but I'm when, when you start talking about uh, crushed uh, rubber or poured rubber is that is that ground up old tires is that uh, 
It is, but it isn't that product, Chairman. Uh, this product here, the products that you were seeing in the news, okay, it's a loose, it's just like wood chips. Instead of putting wood chips out, okay, you're putting it's this out. It's not the granulated where they put it on soccer fields. And, and this has a binder epoxy. Once it's, uh, once it's finished, it's like, a, um, it's like a rubberized mat, okay? It's not, there's no loose particles. There's okay. not anything, again, with the epoxy and the binder that you mix in with it. So it's it is, a solid it piece. Is li it's, it is literally poured just like concrete, and it is finished just like concrete. Okay. But it's not the loose materials of what you're talking about. I yield the floor back to District 4. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve. We have a motion. In a second. Second, District 5. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so moved. Now, I would like to yield the floor to District 4. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, uh, I had made a motion to amend the agenda earlier to uh, name the park Bud Kelly Park. And I, I felt like that the Kelly Town area and having known uh, a number of the Kellys that it was, it's, I, I feel like that it's the right thing to do. I mean, it's Kelly Town Road, Kelly Town Park, and I think it should be Bud Kelly Park. We have Warren Holder Park. We have uh, Richard Craig Park. We have, you know, we got J.P. Mosley Park. And I feel like it's very appropriate for this to be uh, named Bud Kelly Park. And I'd like to make a motion that we name the park Bud Kelly Park at Kelly Park. Second, I uh, have a motion, District 4, second, District 3. Any further discussion? No, in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. What, what we'll do to make this absolutely official that our next meeting we'll have the resolution and a proclamation to honor uh, uh, Mr. Kelly in this, in this endeavor. Thank you, sir. That would be perfect. Uh, let me take, let, let me take executive, you three, right? Thank you. You messed me up when you stayed up there. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I asked you to do, yes, sir. Um, I was just going to ask, um, Ron, just because I, I know we've gotten several emails from the mayor of Hampton and other cons you know, citizens. Just want to know, give us an update on the, the District 2 Senior Center, because I know that's our big capital project. And while I had you here in front of us, I didn't want to step on Bud Kelly Park, so that's why I didn't hit you up while during that section. But I would like to get an update just so the public, since I know a lot of people keep up with this stuff. Commissioner, we, uh, we have ad advertised for a design firm uh, we received 16 proposals. Uh, we have a, a committee that has met. We have narrowed that down to three firms. Those three firms are in the process. Um, by December 22nd, they we're asking for it for their price. We're asking for their concept. We're asking for their approach. We're going to bring those three firms in. the The selection committee is going to uh, pick the best firm, and I will be bringing that to the board. At the beginning of the year okay so we can start the design i anticipate the design to be six to seven months of design uh, so to answer your question we should be under construction somewhere after we go ahead and we let the contract we should july uh, right in the middle august of the year. August, yeah it, somewhere around the july or august okay and i anticipate the construction to be somewhere around a year so okay. Making progress, that's good. Thank you, Ron. Anybody else? Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to go back to items, let's go to item seven, request by Jennifer Rosenbaum to address the board. It has been brought to my attention and verified that in our last previous uh, newsletter, we advertised that this meeting would be at 9:30. Would one staff members say that it was advertised at 9:30? This meeting, I've, I've seen it in writing. Shay just brought it up here to court. So having said that, she got here at 9:15. I would like for the board to consider amending the agenda to hear her now for 15 minutes, since that error was on us. Otherwise, I don't think it would be heard. Seeing uh, no motion, uh, we're going to move on and we will not hear it. Thank you. Next, let's move to a Splash Transportation Project Resolution Transferring Funds from District 3. Completed projects to District 3, Splash 4, Resurfacing, Widening, or Surfacing Treatment. Uh, Rocky, good morning. Good morning, Chairman and uh, Board Members. 
SPLUS 4 was approved by voters uh, in November of 2013. Resurfacing, widening, or surface treatment is a des designated SPLUS 4 project. The following District 3 SPLUS 4 projects have been completed. Candler Road, Butler's Bridge Drive, Eskew Road, and East Knight Road. The above projects were completed under budget with the exception of SQ Road, where the project overran in the amount of $6,545.48. Henry County Department of Transportation performed their surface treatment for all of the above projects and paid $6,690.67 for the overrun on the stone for SQ Road using Henry County DOT General Funds account. The SPLUS department needs to reimburse Henry County DOT General Funds account with $145.19 from SQ Road, that would leave a balance of zero for SQ Road, and $6,545.48 from savings incurred on Butler's Bridge Drive for a total of $6,690.97. Staff recommends the reimbursements of the $6,690.67 for the additional cost of SQ Road to the Henry County DOT General Funds account and to transfer the remaining $46,650.92 to the District's three SPLUS four resurfacing, widening, or surface treatment projects account. Anybody have any questions for Rocky? If not, we have a resolution in the book for the Henry County Board of Commissioners to reimburse Henry County Department of Transportation and the transfer fund from District 3 completed projects to District 3 splash 4 resurfacing, widening, widening and surface treatment. So move. Have a motion District 3. Second. Second District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor raise your right hand. All opposed same sign. So move. Resolution transferring funds from District uh, 2 completed projects to District 2 splash for resurfacing, widening, and surfacing. Rocky. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, uh, the following District 2 uh, splash 4 projects have been completed. Um, Floyd Road, Farmer Drive, Jones Road, Fields Drive, and South Mount Carmel Road. The above projects were completed under budget. Staff recommends the transfer of the remaining unspent amount of 216000 $136.60 to District 2, SPLOS 4, resurfacing, widening, and sur or surface treatment projects account. Uh, I would also like to add uh, to give thanks to Terry McMichael and the DOT staff that worked on all these projects. Uh, because of them, we were able to have this savings on both District 3 and District uh, 2. Anybody have any questions? We have a question. I have more of a statement. Yes, sir. You know, we open up these agenda books, we get to go through them and, and look at them. Usually we spend a lot of money, and, it, and it's understandable. I mean, we're big, we're the seventh largest, I believe, county, you know, population-wise, so we spend a lot of money. And then when I open up the book, and I see the beautiful words of the above projects were completed under budget, and then I see $216,136.60 to the District 2 SPLOS 4 resurfacing, widening, and surface treatment project account, I smile. So I want to I wanted to thank you, Rocky. I know you also thank Terry. Joint effort, but it's always nice for, I think, the citizens, the taxpayers, as well as us to see us when we do things, do good work, and come in cheaper. Everybody, that's a high five moment, so I wanted to thank you for that. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Anybody else have any comment? Otherwise? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, our staff, uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in my last two meetings here, and, and I've said it before, our staff, uh, our rec department, uh, our SPLA staff, our, our DOT, you know, our people do such a good job. And, uh, you know, it, it's not easy work. I mean, it, 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 it's actually the, some of the toughest work, especially DOT and road work. I, <laughs> I've been there, I've done it, it's not any fun. But uh, at the end of the day, I really want to uh, thank our staff for all the work that they've done. And, and savings mean a lot. I mean, it, it should mean a lot to the people that watch this meeting to see that, hey, you know, we had amounts budgeted. And, and the budgets are not just blown out of the sky. They're budgets that are taken from previous work. They're taken from previous, you know, from a history of what it costs to do it. So in order to bring it in at a, at a lower number, 
it, it's just good. And, and you know, I, I've seen uh, a lot of the work myself, and I want to take this opportunity to thank staff. And I'll be doing it again before, you know, in the next meeting. But uh, just for all the hard work that all of you have done, all of you, then all of the staff. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else have any comment? If not, I have a resolution at the Henry County Board of Commissioners transferring funds from District 2 complete, completed project for District 2 splash 4, research and widening and treatment. Definitely move to approve. I have a motion District 2, second. second District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So Thank moved. you. Next, we'll have a public care and abandonment of two sections of old Atlanta Road right away. Mr. McMichaels. Good morning, Chairman, Board Members. Henry County DOT, along with Code Enforcement and the Police Department, received numerous complaints about, uh, and I might add the Commissioner too as well, complaints about dumping, inappropriate behavior, and illegal activities occurring at a cul-de-sac located at the end of a gravel section of Old Atlanta Road. Henry County DOT Director, Code Enforcement Director, and a representative from the Police Department met on site with the citizens from Valley Hill Subdivision to seek resolution to the problems they were having. The citizens asked for the road to be closed at the end of the pavement and the gravel section to be blocked off. The process of abandoning a road was then explained to a representative of the subdivision. During the process of showing the citizen what section of road had been abandoned and what sections would have to be abandoned, we discovered that the current cul-de-sac was on a section of road that had been abandoned. At that point, DOT would either have to relocate the cul-de-sac um, or move it back onto a section that would be a public road or declare this where it was sitting back a public road. And I have some drawings here in a minute that I'll kind of go over this. Um, <clears throat> horse leaving the cul-de-sac at its current location didn't solve the citizens' issues, so we recommend moving the cul-de-sac to the end of pavement and abandoning the remainder of the road. Uh, this section is, is identified as track one in your books. Um, the second section that we're asking to abandon um, was acquired in 1995 in order to relocate the old road, uh, the old, where the old road was and where it intersected Valley Hill. The alignment at that time had old Atlanta intersecting Valley Hill right where Valley Hill Road intersects with 42. The proposed relocation would have moved the new tie-in location uh, to the east. The required right-of-way would have facilitated that project. However, that project was never done and the county still has that right-of-way in place. So as part of this, we would like to abandon that section as we really don't see a need um, for that. Let me kind of run back through this. This is 42. Um, this is Valley Hill Road. Originally, the road came in right, right where Valley Hill hits 42. The old road years ago came in there, came down, and then went all the way back up. And a short distance up here was where it was paid. The splice project that was done 2006, four, five, somewhere around 2005, did improvements to this intersection and originally included taking old Atlanta and swinging it back up here to 42. During the process of that project and acquiring right of way, the property owners in here had no desire, no need for the road to come up through here and tie back in. Um, they just requested that we cul de sac the road uh, and not make this tie into 42, and that's what was done. So after that was done, this section of the road all the way down to right here was abandoned in 2000, I believe around 2005, 2006, somewhere in there.
this is again this section that was abandoned is is this shaded area right here. Uh, this goes this area here goes all the way back to Valley Hill Road. This was a piece that was abandoned. The cul-de-sac was placed right in this area right here. If you notice, when that cul-de-sac was placed there, it was uh, put there <coughs> in a section that had been formally abandoned. So now the county um, had this area in here as deeded right away. So when we abandoned the road, we still owned the property, but we had abandoned it as a public road. We discovered this when we were meeting with the representatives out there, um, discovering, talking about the problems with this cul-de-sac, we learned that the cul-de-sac was actually sitting in an abandoned section. So the residents were requesting that this cul-de-sac be moved to the south and the, the pavement, as you can tell, ends right here. They wanted this cul-de-sac to be up here where it'd be much more visible uh, and hopefully eliminate the problems that they were having with dumping, some activities that required the law to come and get involved in, and just a lot of things going on down there so, because it was so secluded. So that was their desire. So um, we contacted or tried to contact the property owner in here to see if they had any interest um, in abandoning this section because a lot of this dumping was going on on their property as well. Um, didn't hear from them, so the, really the only interest that this road serves to citizens would be access to this property and then rear access to the citizens that live in this subdivision, in Valley Hill subdivision. Um, this property here has frontage all the way across 42. So we're not leaving it landlocked or anything like that. More than likely, you know, this property would uh, have sufficient frontage here. Terry, what's, uh, what's the one that property currently? This is unimproved. It's just yeah. wooded, as well as this one down here. Mm -hmm. The only improvements are the, you know, this. these are existing houses on, and these lots back up to the road. So it's there backyard that comes up to the right of way. The, what we're asking today is to abandon two sections and I really want to clean this up. Kind of this puts it back in perspective. Um, Again, here's Valley Hill, here's 42, um, this is Old Atlanta, the paved section, and then the pavement currently ends right here. Um, as it is today, if you go out there, this gravel road extends down and there's the existing cul-de-sac. Um, so what we're asking for is to abandon this section of road right here, move this cul-de-sac from here and place it up here, where it'll be much more visible, but yet give the trash trucks and school bus and other vehicles that come down there an opportunity to turn around. Um, and then we will put something here to, you know, to barricade that off where they can't continue going down in there. Then the, the old right-of-way that I mentioned as this other section we would like to abandon was the county was donated this strip uh, a long time ago and I think, remember the road used to come up here and swing around like that. I think it was the intentions at one point in time to take this road and push it out here. So the county has deeded right away in here. I don't think this road serves any public interest to put that road all the way through there. Again, this area is not improved. I don't know that you would eliminate the dumping and all of that if you put this road back through here. I really don't think you've solved that problem. So we're requesting to abandon this section as well. This little piece has already been abandoned back in uh, 2006 and then abandon this. Basically, that will leave this entire quarter, uh, quarter uh, you know, abandoned and just this section here is a county road. I know that was a lot of information. 
Um, and we do have some representatives from the subdivision, I believe, here this morning as well. With that, I, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have, and I hope I explain that well enough to kind of understand what's going on out there. But this is just to clean up uh, some right-of-way issues and uh, try to eliminate some problems that are occurring. I think the main thing is we're not landlocking anybody. Those two tracks are very large tracks that that enter uh, track one and track two on your diagram that enter out into State Route 42. So we're not landlocking anybody and we're actually doing away with something that actually there's probably more going on there than just uh, trash dumping. So, uh, you know, I th because we're not landlocking anything, I, th I think it's a good move. I th just wanted to be sure that we said that for public benefit. We're not landlocking track one and track two. They do, they have plenty of access and frontage on 42. So. It's for years, and it's probably time that we uh, look at abandoning it. Anybody else have any comments or questions? If not, uh, uh, this constitutes a public hearing. I'll open the floor up for 15 minutes for people that want to speak for this uh, abandonment, and I'll give 15 minutes for people that want to oppose it. So if you come up, uh, state which you want to do, state your name and address for the records, and this will constitute a public hearing. Hi, my name is Stephanie Young. I live at 368 Grove Hill Drive in Stockbridge, Georgia. It's, it is lot six on the plat that he's showing here um, with the cul-de-sac directly behind our house. Um, we have had issues for the eight years that we've been there with everything, uh, drugs, sex, dumping, um, people messing around down there. We've called the police on numerous occasions. I only have one concern. I was wondering when they, they have surveyed now and put the middle of the road, which the right of way, I guess, would return. I'm just concerned that the barricade is directly behind my lot. Um, it, it was a small barricade and people had run over it, uh, run into it, a stolen beer truck was found on it and stuff. So they kept pushing the garbage up into a pile. Um, so now people can't get over it. But I'm just, my only concern is that this actually be moved, the current barricade um, from what would probably become our property or is right behind our property because um, we're not capable of doing that and once they block it at the other end um, no one would be able to move all of that trash I did bring some pictures if anyone wants to see them but there's all kinds of trash back there sofas and um, showers and tires and, and all kinds of things like that so I just wanted to ask that that area be cleaned up and left like the rest of the area which is just gravel um, when they abandon this road so I accept your comments that you're in favor of this abandonment. Absolutely, a thousand percent okay. in favor of it, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else like to be heard? Second call, if anybody else like to be heard? Yes, sir. State your name and address for the record. And tell us if you're for or against it, please. My name's Don Wheat. I live at 380 Grove Hill Drive. And I've been pastoring the county for a long time as Commissioner Holmes knows. This does create a lot more than just a county dump. We have had, I have complained and have called the school board where the school bus driver is driving up there and relieves himself out of the school bus door. Uh, we've had people down there that's doing drug activity in that bottom, at that color sack. It's nothing but a nuisance. And I feel that it will save the county money that we'll not have to pave and that thing and grade it to make a pavement for people to come and dump their trash. And if you come down there right now, I can show you sofas and everything else that's piled up down there. Uh, we've had uh, the police department, they've come out there and they have posted officers at that cooler sack and they see people coming down the road for a long distance. Of course, those people can see the officer sitting down there with his lights on top of his car, so they make a quick turnaround and leave. Now, we have people also uh, have told me that it's a Georgia law that you can go on any property that doesn't have a posted sign and hunt. These directly across that road is my, from my house over, we've had people set up deer stands. Now that's much too close to my house to be hunting. 
I've called the police department. They've come out there and they've checked this out and worked on it. We've got the police department is constantly out there. I have pictures here that I think I provided with you gentlemen with from uh, Arthur Williams, the uh, code enforcement of all the trash that's going down there. I also presented with you, uh, to you uh, from Miss Sandy Hawkins Community Service of all the complaints that has been, and it's not just me, there's other people in my community that has complained about this uh, road. And if it's uh, at all possible, I would love to see that thing stopped. And the people up at the paved road, at the end of the paved road there, they say they would like to have that done, and I think one of them's here, that it would stop all of that traffic coming up and down their house and make it easier for to see who's dumping. And we've even had the tree service from uh, Jonesboro to come down there and dump huge trees that they've cut up and put down there, and they're coming out of Jonesboro, Clayton County. It's just not, it's not good. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else like to be heard this time? Chairman, I, I just want to say to Mr. Week, um, I've been to his home and um, I have um, had the opportunity to, to see all the, um, the trash and the dirt in the back, and um, I'm very concerned about it. So I want to thank um, Mr. Wheat for his persistence. And um, with that, I'm going to move to approve that we um, move going. in that direction. Let me ask one more time. Does anybody else need to be heard this time for or against it? If not, I determine that the public hearing has expired, so now would be the appropriate time for someone to consider a motion. I move to approve that we abandon the road. We have a motion on the floor resolution of the Henry County Board of Commissioners abandoning two sections of Old Atlanta Road right away. Second. Have a second, District 4. Many for the discussion. All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank you. Let's move down to transportation enhancement agreement with the uh, GDOT for funding Henry County Parkway paths. Chairman, board members, Henry County received a transportation enhancement grant for placing sidewalks along Henry Parkway connector and multi-use trail and sidewalks along Henry Parkway. Uh, Henry County DOT has done the preliminary engineering and is in the process of preparing the bid package for the project prior to receiving the authority to advertise from Georgia DOT. Henry County is required to have three copies of this transportation agreement Sign, GDOT will then process these agreements and send us back a signed agreement. Then we will submit our bid package for back uh, to Georgia DOT for approval. Once approved, we will receive authority to advertise. It is then that we can put it out to bid. After it's put out to bid, Georgia DOT will then review the bids and give us notice that we can proceed with an award of the contract then followed by a notice to proceed with construction. So this resolution authorized chairman to sign this transportation or this transportation enhancement agreement and other items included in the checklist between Henry County and Georgia DOT for the Henry Parkway Pass project. Anybody have any questions or comment? If not, we have a resolution authorizing the Henry County Board of Commissioners uh, to contract funding under the Transportation Equity Act for the 21st century, wherein is referred to as a TEA 21 for project uh, Charlie Sierra Tango Echo Echo 009-00092PI uh, uh, number 009092 Henry County. The scope of the project shall be constructed of Henry County Parkway Pass. Is somebody moving in that direction? So moved. Have a motion for District 1. Second. Second District 5, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so move. Thank you. Next, we have a resolution authorizing the funding of additional positions within the Building Planning Department, George Patterson. Good evening, or oh, good morning. Good morning, Chairman, board members. Uh, I bring before you for additional uh, staff in the Building Department and Plan Review. The, the purpose of this is to uh, enhance the ability to, to uh, process building permits and inspections in a, a more efficient and um, a better mm -hmm. way. Uh, currently, we are two and a half weeks uh, backlog in uh, permit issuing due to the shortness of the staff. Um, uh, the three positions that we're asking for is a developer inspector one, a commercial inspector 
for the residential side who can do commercial and residential to perform a dual role for us. Also, we ask them for a plan review specialist, specialist and the purpose of that is we have a lot of old zoning conditions where we talked about types of building materials, uh, a percentage of certain house sizes. That person will also oversee the, uh, the, the uh, ULDC, some of the conditions and the ordinance inside of ULDC. Uh, we currently um, was budgeted for the year was 1.2 million as of November. We, are, we have exceeded what we projected uh, for the year. Um, this time last year, we performed uh, residential 365. We currently at 575. Uh, the dollar amount was 853,000. And I say again, we at 1.252 uh, million dollars. These three positions with salary wise, would come out to be $187,944. Uh, no equipment would need to be purchased due to the downsides we had over the years. We currently already have the equipment in place, so no new equipment will, will have to be purchased. Uh, and other than that, do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions or comment? Yes, sir. I hate to be the only one, but this, the, this, a lot of this things today have fell in my area, and uh, this definitely is. I, I don't think you can ride around anywhere in Henry County and not see some type of construction, be it commercial or residential. Uh, and, and at the time, obviously, I was around when we had to make all the cuts. Uh, we made the cuts because we wasn't doing anything. Okay. You know, we might do 100 inspections a year. Now you're already up to almost 600. Uh, it's something that's needed. Uh, the industry needs it in order to, to keep Henry County moving forward and have businesses that want to come here. They don't want to come here if it takes them 12 weeks to get a permit. It, you know, you, we've, we've got to make that simplified. We've got to move it forward, and we can't do it if we don't have the help. And I definitely agree with Mr. Patterson that we need to make that move and make that happen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else have any comments? We have a resolution of the Henry County Board of Commissioners to authorize the funding of additional, adding additional positions within the Building and Planning and Review Department. So moved. Have a motion, District uh, 4. Second. Second, District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so moved. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the Chairman, Commissioner's comments. I have no comments. Anybody, Commissioner, have any comments at this time? If not, county manager, would you, do you have any comments at this no, time? Uh, county attorney, you have any comments at this time? No, sir. Uh, upcoming meetings, holidays, Tuesday, December the 16th, uh, 6.30 uh, p.m. would be a regular meeting, Thursday and Friday, December 25th, 26th, Christmas holidays. Uh, next, we have uh, requests from legal counsel to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing real estate and some litigation. So I would uh, ascertain a motion to adjourn to executive session. So uh, we have a motion uh, to go into executive session to discuss these two items. Uh, do I hear District 4 second. have a motion? Have a second from uh, District 5. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. So move. Uh, we're going into executive session. And uh, I would release the two police officers at this time. Thank you so much.